Good day, Year 13. This is an example of osmotic regulation in a marine species. So we'll start off with what is homeostasis. It's maintaining those internal conditions despite the environment changing. So keeping everything constant in the body despite the external environment mucking around and doing some weird things. Osmotic regulation is making sure that the amount of fluids that are inside cells are kept the same so that normal cell function can occur. Because osmosis, as you know, is the movement of water from high concentration to low concentration. And if you live in fresh water, you're going to constantly have water entering the cell through osmosis, because the cell contents are less water concentrated. So you've got to actively pump the water out. If you live in salt water, you've got to do the opposite. You've got to take water in, otherwise the cells aren't going to function. The significance of this, well, if you live in fresh water and you didn't pump the water out, the cells are all going to expand and explode. And if you're in salt water, all the cells are going to dry out, all the water is going to be taken out by the ocean, and the cells are going to plasmalize. That water is absolutely vital. My example is all about Chinook salmon. And they live in the ocean. They have to therefore actively drink lots of water. And when they do that, they actually bring in lots of chloride ions, which isn't very good. The kidney works by taking all the stuff that's in the blood, filters it all through a structure called a glomerulus, and so all the water and various other dissolved ions travel through into the um, collecting duct. They all travel down to a structure called the loop of Henle, which reabsorbs all the water, as much water as possible. So this is all part of the homeostatic control. When the hematocrit level, which is all the blood cells, in the blood, when that level increases because the water content's going down, the hypothalamus registers that increase, so that's your detection. It then sends a signal to the brain to start drinking salt water, and as part of doing that, the pituitary is going to secrete growth hormones and cortisol. The growth hormones and cortisol produce lots of chloride cells to help the gills excrete all of that excess chloride that's going to come in with the fluid, and it's going to modify the kidney. So therefore, as the salmon drinks lots of salt water, the kidney is modified to ensure that lots of water gets reabsorbed from that salt water, but the chloride is excreted out through the gills. Problem is, though, salmon reproduce in fresh water. So they, when they're adults, they come up the streams and rivers, and they will breed in fresh water. And so they have now encountered the absolute opposite osmotic spectrum. So the fresh water is going to start just entering the body cells passively, threatens to destroy them. So it's a very big disruption to function. If the kidney isn't modified really quickly to start excreting lots of that water to get rid of it because it doesn't want to no longer keep it, then it's going to be damaged. So the way that works, go back to this um, feedback loop again. So again, the hematocrit level is detected. There is a decrease in the hematocrit as a result, so the hypothalamus picks that up, and it signals the pituitary to produce the hormone vasotocin. And vasotocin allows the glomerular membrane to stop reabsorbing that water back out of the collecting duct, so it just all gets excreted out. And that way, the kidney prevents being damaged. The advantage to the salmon in doing this, in going from a marine environment into fresh water, well, Breeding in freshwater enables the newly hatched young to avoid lots of predators out in the ocean because they're, they're going to be in the plankton. They'll get eaten by planktivores really quickly. There's a huge amount of food for hatched salmon, like larval insects, other invertebrates, and things like that. The marine environment also has a hell of a lot more food for salmon when they're a lot bigger. So coming out of the freshwater into the marine, lots more food for them when they're a bit bigger. They can't survive eating larval insects for the rest of their lives. So adaptation, via changing their excretory mechanisms, allows the salmon to take advantage of two niche, which is a huge advantage to them. So to conclude, osmotic pressure in the body cells is regulated by the hypothalamus. It detects the water level in the blood by detecting hematocrit. It will signal to the pituitary to release the necessary hormone to either increase the nephron permeability to get rid of water, or do the reverse and try and keep the water in and produce the chloride cells to allow it to excrete the excess. And it all depends on the environment they're in. Thanks very much, guys. Hopefully this has helped.